Informed, outspoken, wild, fearless. This is the Fantasy Football Dudes Podcast. What is up, my dudes? Joe Burrow's back. Raiders are back. But most importantly, your dudes are back. This is Trent. I am joined by Seth, Jordan, and Phil. We are fighting the time change right now. It is Sunday night, but a happy Monday to all my dudes. Uh, Phil, how you doing, buddy? You hanging in there? You look a little little sleepy-eyed right over here? Right yeah, there? I mean, the, the time change is tough for dads with kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, I almost would put the time change people, the people responsible for the time change, as my diva of the week, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but outside of that, I'm doing pretty good. Didn't I, I honestly, for a football guy, I got to watch a good, a, a little bit of football, got to watch some red zone a little bit here and there. And uh, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of the, the early games. I will say that. Like I always, if there's an early game on, I always get to watch it. And so I'm appreciative of that. Um, but overall, good weekend. Got to see the dogs win yesterday. Feeling pretty good. Um, ultimate fan. Uh, out there just repping and uh, overall just a good game. But uh been a good week of sports, huh? A good week of sports. And honestly, my kids did pretty good on the time change. So no complaints there. The fallback's definitely easier than the spring forward. Jordan, you hanging in there? You doing okay? No Jags today. So you can't be mad at that. No, yeah. It was a pretty good weekend overall. College football was awesome yesterday. Had a really good day college football wise, kind of just maybe a little bit of profit NFL wise today, maybe break even. I don't know, somewhere around there. But when you have a huge day before, you know, as long as you don't get killed, you know, the weekend's always, always a good weekend. So did you, did you have any of that SCU dub game at all? Or is it, or is there too many people in that game, Jordan? No, that was on a different, uh, that was on the night, the night slate, not the, the main slate. So, and you didn't get uh, in on that? Uh, yeah, I did, but I, I always play that light, you know, especially because we I was at that wedding too. So, yeah, but busy. We should probably play. give him some. We should probably give him some rep. He's a huge listener. Yeah, yeah Zach, true. L- listener of the pod gave us a. Uh, Got married this weekend, so that was good. Uh, his wife, let's top it actually, up for that. Yeah, he actually we never thought his, it was going to happen. We never thought it was going to happen. He actually we never, makes his, he makes his wife like listen that. to the pod, Phil. He makes her yes. listen. Yeah, we Talk about having your household in order. This guy's starting his marriage off on the right foot. Seth, you no, were in you the could, wedding. You could learn some lessons from him, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, you doing okay, little guy? Yeah, I was I was in the wedding. Yeah, it was a fun time. I had a good time. Zach's one of my good friends. Uh, thankful I'm in that wedding. Happy for that guy. He'll probably be listening to this episode tomorrow while he's in Hawaii. But if yeah. he is, All right, I don't know why go. you're listening to this. But, I mean... He probably is going to because he's a faithful listener. Well, we've he's given dating there. advice out before. I wouldn't be surprised if our some of our dating advice in the earlier pods helped him out. Would you? Absolutely. I, I would guarantee that almost. Uh, yeah, as long it, as it didn't come from any of the three of you, it's probably fine. Um, <laughs> Here's the deal. I was at a wedding. I had a wedding on Saturday. Seth had weddings on Saturday and today. I have four weekends and four weddings in seven days. It's a wild week here. I He's a bridesmaid in all of them. <laughs> Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. No, uh, anyways, yeah, Trent was a flower girl today. I'd imagine that. <laughs> you wish, you weirdo. Okay, he was anyway, a wagon. This is the like, guy in a dress. Okay, here's Seth right here at the wedding. I'm just going to show you what he was wearing. He was repping our sponsors at the wedding. Underdog, the dude's favorite place. <laughs> to do best ball enter promo code dudes they'll match you up to 100 dollars. seth's wearing an underdog shirt underneath his shirt at the wedding you know he and that's not me across the table off. just for what it's worth that's not phil across the table but go check that on youtube and that is the TFF sunday night game dudes. on there sunday night game was going so seth was really you know helping your dudes out so it, thank you seth for that i usually am not very thankful for what you do but usually don't do too much i'm being completely honest <laughs> remember to give us a subscribe a follow don't be rude share the dudes really helps us out let's jump into week nine we got our week nine recap and then we're going to follow it up with who hurt you uh, just a little recap just a little announcement uh 
I will be doing my waiver show tomorrow. You won't want to check. You won't want to miss that. There's some good waivers out there. Some waivers I gave this week that had some decent plays. I, I talked about Derek Carr as a stream this week. I also talked about Baker Mayfield who had a good game. And then as a tight end, I had David Njoku who also found the end zone. So guys go check out the waiver pod on Tuesday to help you get ready for waiver day. Week nine, guys. Game of the week. I kind of would have been a good primetime game. Was not primetime game. Houston and the Buccaneers. That was wild. The game was totally bananas. Jordan, were you tuned in on that game? Were you you, you watching that? You got any plays in there? Yeah, I watched. Uh, I had some Rashad White, some Tank Dell, but CJ Stroud was like my last cut. But this morning, I had like five quarterbacks. I went down to four, my 20 max. But you had to pretty much have the Texans to win every, anything uh, on DraftKings today. But uh, yeah, I watched that game. It was a crazy game, back and forth. I honestly wanted the Buccaneers to win just because, you know, Jaguars and the division and stuff. But um, yeah, CJ Stroud's really good. Texans are going to be good. Uh, I was honestly shocked at how bad their defense was today. But because they've been pretty good. But yeah, fun game. CJ Stroud's legit. He's real good. It, Tank Dell looks Tank Dell looks really good there also. Well, all, all the receivers, Schultz, I think Schultz, Stra uh Dell I can tell you right and now. uh and Brown. They all had crazy yeah. good games. Dell, Brown, um, and Schultz all have over a hundred yards and each a touchdown. Dell had two. Nico Collins had fifty four yards and a touchdown. I mean, <laughs> he we had five touch. He threw five touchdowns. Who didn't have so. a touchdown? Basically, yeah, basically is right. Basically, well. Devin Singletary. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Fair point there. Yeah, it was a that was a wild game. And Baker Mayfield on the other side, like Bucks on the other side. Baker did enough to win that game. You know what I'm saying? The what was it? C.J. Stroud gets the ball back with what 45 seconds left. 46 seconds left and drives him down to score a touchdown right at the end. Yeah, 75 so, yard drive. Yeah. Yeah. And like I was watching that, and I'm like, man, Baker actually is going to pull this out, you know, has a game winning drive. And then they give the ball back with 46 seconds. And CJ Stroud is just, uh, he's turning into a beast. It looks yeah, really he good. had a 40 point fantasy week. Ouch. Baker hasn't, to, to your point, Trent, Baker has ha put some pretty good stats up, both fantasy wise and. Just football wise, he's only thrown four picks, and I know that sounds like kind of a lot, but it's through nine That's games. He's lot. only had four. He's yeah. only had thrown four picks yeah, from what I'm seeing good. here. That's pretty yeah. solid. QB eighteen on the year for fantasy football on the season. He had nineteen points this week, twenty one the week before, and seventeen. So he has three straight weeks of seventeen points at least, and. uh He's really getting Mike. I did uh, Mike Evans get he's involved. Only, he's not blowing up. Hasn't had a blow up game though. Well, well he was like a yard short of a touchdown today. Was he? Mike Evans was yard short of a touchdown. Yeah. What you may have already said this. I might have missed it. He's only forty nine percent rostered from what I'm seeing. Thirty one percent started. So there's depending on what your quarterback situation looks like. Um, it, it may not be a bad play uh, or streaming him against some of these other teams that you got coming up. Um, who's he have next? Of, uh, he has who's Tennessee. Him? He has Tennessee. Um, and then he has San Francisco and then he has Indianapolis. Um, so there's a couple matchups there that shouldn't be too bad. Carolina in four weeks. Um, I, I actually don't think he could be a bad stream and he's, he's totally possible to pick up. Yeah. And then, uh, first place Seahawks fall to the Ravens. That was, uh, do, do we need to do a moment of silence for that? You know, Phil, I'm surprised you made it to the pod here anyways. Like that game was <laughs> terrible. I'm so, I went out to lunch after church and they had that game on. And after the Ravens had 30 points, the guy just switched it. And I was so thankful he did. Cause I was done watching after they got that, like they got 30 points. I was just like, I'm done watching this game is terrible. You wanted to put your head in your menudo. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a burger, but yeah, I did. I would have put my head in it. Yeah, if I could have. You should have. It was a bad game. It was a well, bad game. Well, and then looking at it, you know, Bobo Baggins, I guess, went back to the Shire. He had zero fantasy points. So there goes that little run of fun we've been having lately. So 
bad game for uh, your boy Jake Bobo, Seth. You I hope you didn't that start him. Anymore. I'm just saying. I hope you didn't start him. No, I would never start Jake Bobo. But he's a. It's a fun. It's a feel good story. So I don't know. I'm surprised Phil didn't ask for like a moment of silence for the Seahawks. You know, putting up that bad a performance because it was really bad. I like how you yeah. say run of fun, but I'm pretty sure you've never called uh, a run at any point fun in your life. All right, uh, let's. Uh, that was a terrible joke. Let's. Uh, let's wow, move on probably one it. of your better ones. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> I, I have the Germany game, Phil. You, you watched that one. What, what were your? I did watch. About the, I did. I, did you start did seeing it. Country Roads with those guys? No, but I um I there's college football man. When you hear there's a there is a I'm I probably shouldn't even say it. There was a version of Sweet Caroline that was uh that I saw on the old IG, uh and it was it's definitely not appropriate. But some of those some of those schools they belt out some lyrics. I will say that. And I know we're talking Germany game, but if you watched any college football this weekend, there were quite a few uh I, I don't know songs being sung. Did you guys see any of those? I did not see any of the songs being mm -hmm. sung. Jordan's normally our uh, song uh, guy who reports back on songs, so you're kind of stealing his thunder, Phil. Sorry, Jordan. That is that is, that is not true, Phil. I was at, you see how the whole German Germany crowd starts singing West Virginia. I actually, I actually like it's surprising I how probably... many like of these countries like actually know like English songs. I know like a lot of German people speak English, but it's funny, you know, like all those like super popular American songs, like a lot of people in a lot of country know these songs. And it's well, we're the greatest country on earth, it. Seth. And what like even the guys like who don't, don't speak it, English, I bet, like know that song in English. And it's so weird. So yeah. But to no, the you're game, right, though. to the game. The Chiefs offense did sputter a little bit again. They scored on their opening drive, and then they didn't score in the second half. The offense didn't score in the second half at all, and I believe they had the defensive touchdown was in the first half, which I was fine with because I did play the Chiefs defense today. I couldn't find a better option, and I didn't want to drop them. Chiefs defense got you some fantasy points, but last week the Chiefs only scored nine fantasy points. This week – or sorry, the Chiefs only scored nine total points last week. This week, they scored 21 with the help of the defense on that last touchdown in the first half. The problem isn't Mahomes. The problem is wide receivers. And it's funny because last year, I thought they didn't miss Tyreek Hill that much. This year, it seems like they are missing Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Like, they aren't getting that pass help from the wide receivers. Yeah, Mahomes is also better last year than he is this year. He's yeah, turning the ball over a mid. ton, and he hasn't, he he hasn't looked great. He's lucky no, his defense is so good. The Chiefs are lucky their defense is so good. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Mahomes hasn't looked like he like he has. Honestly, like no quarterback has like even looked close to what they like like any MVP form last year. Like that's why Tyree Kill is like an MVP front runner because no quarterback has like really established himself as like the top dog. I mean, even like I, can we even say Hurts is like up there right now? Like I don't even know. Like he's thrown a he's had a lot of turnovers too this year. It might be I, Burrow. Burrow's starting yeah. to look real good. Burrow yeah, looks really good. If Burrow they make so a good. run, if it like if the Bengals go on a five six game winning streak, which they could with how good he looks right now, he's gonna be in that conversation for MVP. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they won six and three. Yeah, they well, they won five in a row. Five in a row, six uh, in a row. No, they, it can't be that many in a row. They well, started at zero and three, and they are currently. Give me one second here. They're five they are, and three. Yeah, so they have won five in a row. Yeah, no, they that's look, wild. They, no, the they've, one, they've won four in a row. Four in a row. They started off one and two. Oh, you're right. Row. You're right. Yeah. So they beat in. They got smacked by the Titans, and they beat the Cardinals, Seahawks. Niners Bills like that's three pretty good wins in a row right there yeah, yeah. for sure and then the uh, uh I will say though Jordan like I know Mahomes always looks good on his feet but this year even I would say like and I I don't love I'm not a Mahomes guy and I know you very much are a Mahomes guy like this year more than other years he's looked really good on his feet like just in terms he of he has to he has to though like it's just it's sometimes the only way I think he can move the ball down the field 
It's true, but, but he's been so elusive, though. It, like, it, it's annoying how elusive he's been the last couple of weeks. But I also think that's why he's making more mistakes throwing the ball because he's constantly, like, having to run to move. Yeah. And, yeah, mm -hmm. like, he, he's made some throws this year that it's just like, well, like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But I'm sure you're heartbroken over there. I also think, there. like, teams are, like, trying to, like, last year I think teams kind of, like, it was a different offense without Tyreek Hill, and I think teams, as much as, like, the Chiefs had to adjust to that, I think teams, opposing teams, had to adjust, like, how to guard the Chiefs without Tyreek Hill, where I think this year it's kind of like everyone knows who they are without Tyreek Hill. And so, I don't know. They just don't look good. The offense doesn't look great at all. Yeah, I only, I'm always curious, like, I know, like, everyone has these, like, they don't even say it at Chiefs games anymore because Mahomes throws to nine guys every game now. Like, they don't even say that anymore because he throws to nine or ten guys every game. I, I'm really curious if that's, like, even a sign of a good offense. I mean, I guess guys are open in different slots and windows, and it could be any guy in any spot. But I'm really curious if that is, like, a sign of a good offense, like if ten different guys are catching a ball or if it's, like, the same four – three, four, five guys that are always catching a ball that are open at certain periods. Like I'm I'm curious if that is more of a sign of a good team than a team that's has 10 guys catching a ball. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mahomes Mahomes looks really good. Bengals look good. Joe Mixon actually had some plays tonight. Didn't look bad. You know, fantasy relevant. I don't know if you would say he looks good, but fantasy relevant. Uh but also did you mean Burrow? Did yeah, you mean Burrow? Burrow? All right, Burrow. You meant I'm Burrow. Sorry. Burrow. Yeah, yeah Burrow right. looks good. Mahomes doesn't look great, but if you want to look great, you need to head over to Manscaped, guys. Get the new Lawnmower 5.0, okay? 5.0. Two heads are better than one. It now has advanced dual head system and skin safe blades. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is next gen groomer that'll give you the power to trim, shave, and shape. Two interchangeable. Skin safe blades. Okay. You got the skin safe trimmer blade, skin safe foil blade, waterproof, up to 60 minute runtime, Lee Ion battery, dual LED spotlight, constant RPM, tri level LED low power indicator with a travel lock. Guys, head over to Manscaped, promo code dudes20, 20% 20 off your whole entire order. Guys, really helps us out. Help yourself out. Christmas is coming around the corner. Perfect gift, perfect stocking. stocking stuffer so go ahead over to manscape promo code dudes 20 20 percent off your whole entire order phil let's get into those hold on before we do that we before we do that can we or sorry jordan i was gonna bring i really wanted to talk about one game specifically but go no, ahead. i just want to make one comment on the germany game two of might have had one of the worst throws i've ever seen in that game oh that was a complete duck the one where the guy cedric wilson i think's open for a touchdown, yes. he underthrows him by 15 it was, yards. It was a complete duck, too. It was a duck. Literally might be the worst throw I've ever seen in an NFL. It, it seemed like man. the ball, like it seemed like the ball had like a like like a like fat on it and it just slipped out of his hand. It was so bad. <laughs> he underthrew. No, by I'm serious, yards. though. It's like someone like, like no, 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 the I, ball I, I, and he threw it and slipped out of his hand. He was yeah, wide open say, like, for a touchdown. One of the worst balls I've ever seen for an NFL quarterback. Yes. Throw. It's like it's like Phil. I think if you like hawked it up there, it would have been a tutty. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it. It was like the ball came out of his hand, and the camera guy's like, "What?" And it like it, it was so bad. <laughs> it, it's one of those things that you know. There's a couple of times a year when we feel like we could maybe be a better quarterback on that play. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't happen yeah. a lot. Well, I can tell you this: it wouldn't have been any worse. That's like, I, I know, yeah, he wouldn't have been a worse throw. Yeah. And I'm pretty athletic too. Uh, Bill but was I think a college we're... athlete. <laughs> uh, badminton. And uh, I think we just really haven't talked about the, probably one of the most important things. Like Trent, you called it. The Raiders are back, baby. No one, no one's talking about this. What's going on, Trent? No, the Raiders are back, man. I, the new coach, he he made it simple. It was, you know, keep it stupid, simple. That's what they say. He didn't say that. He said, remember when you watched the Cowboys in the 90s, you knew Emmitt Smith was going to get the ball, you knew Devontae Adams was, or, and you knew Michael Irvin was going to get the ball. He said, we're going to give Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams the ball. Now, Michael, now Devontae Adams didn't really get the ball today, but Josh Jacobs <laughs> did. I, I think Aiden O'Connell, you know, 
still has the training wheels on, and I don't think they needed to throw like they maybe will in other games. But it seems like the locker room actually responded well. The guys like them. They're what four and five. So yeah, I think they're it's safe to say Raiders are back. They, they're Raiders four and five. Told- they just did a mutiny, and that's literally what happened. They mutinied, and so they fired McDaniel's McDaniel. That's what happened. It was a straight up mutiny. Well, how weird was that though? The stuff that got released today that Josh McDaniels told Pierce, like, Hey, I don't appreciate you talking about the Patriots like that. Like talk about a diva, all that stuff. If, if that's, I, I don't know if that's just like, Hey, let's, you know, I, I don't know if that's made up, but that just seems like really silly to like get that mad because it's Pierce as the interim, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, Raiders coach. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he talked about them beating the Patriots in the Super Bowl. McDaniels told him after, like, hey, I don't appreciate you talking about the Patriots like that. Like, who cares? Like, that is such a – I don't know if that's micromanaging or what it is. I think the guy just wants no, to go back not. and he's just, coach the Patriots. It literally happened over a decade ago. Yeah, yeah. he's just lame. He's just – he's just – any. yeah, you can't – How old was he a the, decade ago, like 25? Yeah, he's going to end up – Bill Belichick is going to be retiring at the end of this year. And McDaniels is the heir to the throne, and it's just going to be there's bad there, too. There's zero chance. Zero chance no, Robert no Kraft hires Josh McDaniels. I wouldn't be surprised. He looks I'll so bet another like... hot chip on that one, Phil. Hot you, chip him, Phil. I'm not going to take the chip, but he's he's <laughs> willing to put it. So, yeah, sure. There, I have no risk. Feel no. free. If McDaniels <laughs> is the coach in, in New England next year, you will eat a no, hot you chip. Gotta, you said it here on the less... air. For what it's worth, I feel less confident about that one than the Niners winning the Super Bowl, so I won't do that. <laughs> but there's still zero chance that Robert Kraft hires Josh McDaniels. Yeah, I don't know, that, man. That, there's there, weirder things have happened. Yeah, there's also zero chance that you have a cool fantasy football league if you have not gone to trophysmack.com forward slash go to www.trophysmack.com forward slash dudes. Fifteen percent off your whole entire order, guys. Head over to Trophy Smack. Get a customized trophy. It's not too late, guys. Go get that nice trophy before you know before you have your champion. So, or if you want to get a last place trophy, whatever you want, trophy smack, best place for your fantasy football trophies. So it must Phil, be noted that you're on fire with these ad reads today. I, this might be one of your best pods ever with ad reads, Trent. I just I just want to take a note and and notice you for that because I know you don't get a lot of uh, you know you get, don't get a lot of praise in your life. Um, so let's move on here. And that's the nicest uh, just talk- thing you ever seen me, Phil. So thank you. I'm kind of <laughs> like, I, I feel like I should turn my camera off and just have tears of joy, but I'm going to keep it professional and I'm going to keep it rolling. So let's that's get right. into our starts and sits. Let's that get- were my worst of my life. So at least I'm doing something right. <laughs> yeah, at least. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for the ad reads. Um, but we're going to go with Seth. We're going to actually go with your sleeper. I think you're feeling pretty good about this one. It actually t- t- turned out to be pretty great. Um, let's go with your sleeper here with Taysom Hill. I think Seth's muted. Seth is mute. Seth is muted. Sorry, I pressed the button twice. Uh, yeah, so I kind of like thinking about this one. I'm like, I don't know if Taysom Hill was necessarily a sleeper because he was like yeah. on good trend but i think like sleepers still projected him to have like low points and like people were saying like he's really iffy like who knows like he could either have really good points or really bad points but i think the saints have just kind of like taken the road like hey this guy has to be on the field when we're in the red zone or like it's third and short or they're going for it on fourth down i think they're thinking like this in crucial plays Taysom Hill needs to be on the field because he can pass the ball. If they want to pass it, he can re- receive the ball and go for extra yards or he can run it. Well, you know, like without that, with an extra runner. So he's going to be on the field all the time. Like he's no longer a sleeper. Like if you have him, you need to start him every week until like they're proving that he's not in the script, but it turns out if the saints are going to be in close games or even games that are like, they're up by 10 to 14 points. They're still going to use him in the red zone. So like, you have to play this guy every week now. He's no longer a sleeper. He's 59% rostered, and he was 37% started. So, you know, it's time to quit That's sleeping. what I'm saying. No, you need to start him if you have him now. You yeah. have to. Yeah. No, don't sleep on Taysom Hill, guys. And also, don't sleep on our favorite fantasy app, Sleeper. The dude's favorite place to play fantasy football. Head over to Sleeper, but don't just head over there. Take your entire league over there, guys. Sleeper is the absolute best platform 
for fantasy football. And if you're feeling dangerous, go over to their, you know, weekly plays and enter dudes 100 and they will match up to $100. So again, dudes 100 over at sleeper guys and uh, take your whole league there. You don't even have to play sleepers. The absolute best place to play fantasy football, but yes, Taysom Hill, Seth, I, he's still not started enough for how bad the tight end landscape is in my opinion. And I think you can you can consider him a sleeper if he's under forty percent started, right? Can we can we I well, think we can we can consider that, right? I don't think sleeper has anything to do with what their own. Sleeper is like started. He was like he was under forty like, percent. Yeah, like also like where the consensus ranking on him is, right? Like his consensus ranking he, in PFF was like in the one fifties. Yeah, Just like me. he's probably not being like like uh What's the like? People aren't saying he's a top ten tight end. Well, like if you like, Taysom Hill's getting such the the high value touches. You know, like half his touches mm-hmm. are in, inside the five. So it's just like, and he's catching. He's honestly running more routes and catching more balls than he ever has in his entire career. Yeah, it's true. well, he's yeah, actually tight a gadget player. He's a tight end. Tight end yeah. ten on the season. Yeah, yeah. like that's. It's just gonna keep I, going I'm up curious. if he keeps having weeks like this. Three weeks in a row over 15 points. It's really annoying, like Kamara. Like, if you have Kamara on anything, like, for sure. You watch Taysom Hill in there, and like, the Saints were being weird today. They were running Taysom Hill in there, Conjure Miller. Like, Kamara, like, wasn't playing. I don't know if it was game script. I don't know really what it was, but there was a lot of Taysom Hill because I had some Kamara props that I was keeping an eye on, and Taysom Hill was in there all the time. What's scaring people, I think, from Taysom Hill is in the last three games, they haven't released today's yet. He's his highest snap percentage was 60%. But it doesn't so matter almost, because he's he's getting he gets such the ball good touches. Like he's getting rushes from the three yard line. Like that's such a high value touch. Mm-hmm. And then what what else we got, Phil? Yeah, Trent, you just want to rip the band-aid off. Like I, I'm sorry to do this to you, but this is a... Uh... This was a rough one for you, my guy. And I think you had good intentions here. You're a good intentioned guy. And uh, this one just didn't end up well for you. Which one? None of my plays, I feel like, really ended up I'm going to talk well about the me. worst Gabe, one, but Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis, absolutely terrible. I, I don't – this game with Gabe Davis, I don't – he had goose egg. He straight up goose egged you. He hasn't goose egged you all year. He's had bad performances, but this was bad. Two targets, no catches, no fancy points, no fun. I'm sorry. He hurt me too. I've started him in, you know, three leagues, but yeah, this was bad. His, he's been, I don't know. It seemed like the writing was on the wall for that, but I think most of the plays were going to Shahid, right? What's his name? Shakir. Shakir, Shakira, Shakira. Sorry. So yeah, I mean, he he didn't have a good game either. Like it's, None of the Bills players really played that well, other than uh, Josh Allen had some good fancy points. Well, Kincaid and, then, uh, and Diggs were good. Kincaid that, and Diggs were both good. Was that a fumble by Kincaid? Yeah, it was a fumble. Okay, I just saw the replay. I wasn't sure if that got reviewed or anything. Like I just that. know when I was at the wedding and Trent goes, how is Gabe Davis doing? And I said, Trent, he has zero. And he goes, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it sounded Seth, like there was a blink. That was supposed to be that was supposed nervous. to be off the record, Seth. So thanks for that. But <laughs> Trent was the, really um, sad. He put his head down and walked away too. It was really weird. Yeah, I just was like, well, there's still his free ice roll. cream here, so I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, over he went there. straight to the dessert table, and then I didn't see him come back. Yeah, the problem was they hadn't <laughs> cut the cake yet, so it was kind of awkward. But uh... <laughs> well, Trent, he was coming off his highest targeted game. Like you kind of, I, I get where your head was at, man. This is like sometimes you you know you win some, you lose some. This is kind of one of those. Uh, bad to worse situations because you had some, uh, you know. Actually, Trent, I'm gonna let's go with Marquise Brown. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prop you up here a little bit. Let's go with Marquise Brown. Yeah, I said not to play Marquise Brown, but I, I'd rather, I'd almost rather hit my starts than I would my sits. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Marquise Brown, Cardinals. I think Kyler Murray's gonna come next week. Is that's what it's looking like? I think they yep. could still, you know, hopefully he comes back. But yeah, the Cardinals. Clayton Toon did not look good. And, you know, when you have a rookie quarterback making his first start, you shouldn't start any of those guys unless it's just a really good matchup. Uh, Vikings are kind of like, I don't know if the Vikings are like trying to tank or what they're doing, but uh, Dobbs didn't look bad. Now it was the Cardinals, so it's kind of hard to say, right? But uh, it's crazy that he switched. He just switches jerseys playing against the team he was playing on last, playing against last week. Is that who he played against? They didn't play the Cardinals. They played the Falcons. 
Falcons. The Falcons. Oh, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. My yeah. bad. Yeah. My bad. I don't know yeah, what we're going with. Dobbs actually looked here. good. Dobbs yeah. looked good. He made some good plays. Who won? He said that he game? didn't know that Vikings won. He said that he didn't know any some of the players. He said if we went through the roster, there's I'd be a very bad teammate because he still didn't know some of the guys' names. Yeah. There's some interesting stuff going on there. I if they're trying to tank, I don't think Dobbs knows that. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't know it at the last place either. But yeah, Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland's a really good defense, you know. And I kind of like to stay away from them. Maybe we've targeted them a lot on this pod as guys we don't want to play against. I think they're probably the defense that we have sits against the most. Do you think that's fair to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um. And, go ahead, Trey. Yeah. You guys see the Amari Cooper the second TD? It was like a. <laughs> It was a really bad throw, but it got tipped up in the in the air. And Amari Cooper, he had a, he had two touchdowns, I believe, today. But yeah, it was not a good pass. It was like to a totally different guy. Um, but yeah, Jordy. <laughs> oh, Deshaun Watson, man. Yeah, sorry, he only had one touchdown today. My apologies, but yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, but keep going, Phil. Yeah, let's talk about Jordan. Let's go to your sleeper, Demario Douglas. Yeah. Uh, Mac I feel Jones, like it wasn't uh, terrible man. though, Jordan. No, it was no. fine. It was like a, it's it's like better in PPR because he had like I think 10, 10 and a half in PPR, mm-hmm. eight and a half in in standard or half or whatever. But I don't know. He 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 actually had one catch that it's like a twenty yard catch that I think at that it got overturned as a catch. You know, it looks a little better if it's like he's for sure over ten and a half point there, but. I feel like it could have been a better day, but it's fine. Like he was, I don't think he was ranked very high as like a, you know, coming this week. So, but I, I, I love the spot. I think I'd go do it again all over again. So, but Mac Jones sucks. Do you want to talk about Mac Jones? Oh, we'll wait. We'll save it for Mac Jones. We'll, we'll save yeah. your feelings. What else do you got here, Phil? He's in his feelings. Uh, Seth, you had, you had a uh, Saquon as a start. And uh, <coughs> just kind of just kind of mid there, huh? You're right there, Seth. Yeah, I mean, I guess it was okay. Like, I think for a start, like you look for something more than ten, right? I think he had twelve point nine or he had twelve. 13, I guess, yeah, twelve. So, I mean, it's not like you're not you're not mad. You got twelve points, but you're not like super ecstatic. Like, I think that was less than his projected. I think Daniel Jones like has a significant. They think it's a significant knee injury, so they kind of leaned on him a little bit. I mean, I think he tore his ACL like, is what they're thinking. Yeah, okay. that's what they're thinking. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, so maybe like, I mean, his, his status is going to be like way up there now because now they're only going to give the ball to Saquon because basically their whole team is just getting hurt left and right. Yeah. So as as um, of right now, he's running back thirteen on the week. Yeah. And did he miss some time? I, I was bit. not. He missed a little bit. Like two Maybe weeks like or a week or Wait, what do you yeah. mean? You mean Saquon previously? Uh, mean? Yes, I'm saying this year. This in terms yeah, of he's, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's weeks. missed. He's missed a couple Okay, weeks. yeah. Um, but anyways. Uh, I thought like, he went in the game today. He actually left in the yeah, game. Yeah, I thought maybe it was a good spot because the Raiders' like defense is not good. So like I thought maybe it'd be better, and I think the Giants. I thought they could put up points against the the Raiders, but I think once Daniel Jones got hurt, they just I think it just kind of all fell apart, you know. So but, did you see? I mean, I'm not mad. He got 12 points though. Did you see Coach Pierce's uh, interview? He did a selfie in the locker room after the game. I, had, and, I did uh, not see all that. the guys are smoking cigars, and you have like uh, yeah. Max Crosby without a shirt on just smoking a cigar like hey i saw I that know. crosby paid like for all 47 defensive snaps which is crazy was it only 47 i guess yeah he, but he played all of them though he, he's got a motor he's, he's a good player i mean that's, he, that's a lot to ask for a defensive lineman though like that's a lot yeah you normally they rotate those guys a little bit more yeah but Seth, yeah. there's a lot of three and outs it's a little bit easier right it's true. true. Yeah. It's true. Short short drives by the offense. It's a little bit easier mm-hmm. to kind of play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Moving on here. There's a couple more that we could probably jump into. Jordan, the uh you want to talk about Daryl Henderson or Chris Godwin first? Uh Daryl Henderson. Um yeah, it's just a bad it's it's it was just a bad one by me. 
Uh, I'll take the L there. It's the healing. He got the ball 10 times. Royce Freeman out touched him for the first time. So I, ha- I don't have the snap percentages, but, and then they just, they, they sucked. Like rip ribbons, horrible and they couldn't move the ball. They got down so quickly. So I think they were down like 14, zero early or they were down early. They probably had to throw more, but yeah, rip ribbons, no good. And this Rams offense is bad. So this is a bad, bad one by me. I mean, it's just a pretty good matchup, but I, I don't know. This is a little frustrating. I think being down so much hurt Henderson's. I think Freeman got more involved. So I Vikings looked yeah. really bad. And going off of that, Jordan, you were asking, you know, is Cooper Cup washed? Like, what do we do with Cooper Cup? Did you end up trading Cooper Cup? No, like, I still people- have him. And you still have I'm him. like in last place in that league now with Cooper Cup and Saquon Barkley. I love my team coming in this year, too, in that league. It's crazy. Yeah, that's not and, good. And I think you meant Rams, Trent. Yeah, he meant Rams. You're, you're struggling today, brother. We got in that cup, my guy. He's ate it's too much water. sugar this weekend. Yeah, the sugar high. Much sugar back to back weddings. weddings. Yeah, it was after yeah. that third cupcake. After he found Gabe Davis, put up a donut. He decided to grab another donut for himself <laughs> and ice cream. <laughs> hey, they sell uh, they sell uh, Krispy Kreme at our local grocery store. Do you think they drive those in or like what's that situation set up? They got to well, get they a do delivery, deliveries. Right? Yeah, they do fresh deliveries. Yeah, I saw that today when I walked in this morning. I'm like, man. Yeah, that was in like a new stand. Someone sent me a picture, and I'm like, what is this? Was it? Who oh, was it? Someone in this group I think right someone here? Someone else sent me a picture. <laughs> Two of the people on this pod sent him a picture, but he's not going to. He's not going to. No, out. I know. I really think it was someone else sent me a picture of that too. I'm surprised Phil didn't send us all Twitter. You know, like he said, yeah, I the almost sent the, it to our group the, chat. Yeah, he's all the lights opened up in the grocery store and lights from the heaven shine down on the Krispy Kreme thing right when the right when I walked in on there. And then I Phil I tackled almost, the display. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost bought a, a box today because I saw it and I like just put my hand over it just to feel the warmth. I'm like, are these things still warm? And uh sure enough, they were. So I almost bought why did you not why didn't you buy a box? Yeah, I'm shocked like, you didn't. So there's a couple because things. He's not Number running one, anymore. He's walking. Correct. I am walking. Number one, do I need them? Answer is no. Number yep. two, there's I think it was like box of eight. And it's like, do I need again, do I need more than one? Because I'm definitely eating more than one if I buy a box of eight. Again, the answer is no. And uh, no, I don't know what the third you have like was, but. your family's humongous. It could have been like one donut per person in your family. Yeah, but yeah, I, I know that's a good point. I, I next time, Jordan, I will I will uh, fall into temptation. I will purchase a box of Krispy Kreme donuts. But that's All the other problem. You buy, think about others, Phil. If you if you if you yeah. buy one box of Krispy Kreme donuts, the next day you're going back and buying three to five boxes. So you just have to really no, be careful with this self- situation. You need better self control. Honestly, you could have been the world's greatest dad and bought your kids donuts, and you didn't have to eat any of them. You didn't have to. Eat yeah, I'm pretty sure my, my second oldest daughter was with me and I'm pretty sure she was like, Dad, what are you doing when I like put my hand to make sure that the donut donuts are warm? I think she I think she's doing like, his grimy little hand would have been reaching in the box while he's coming home to eat one. Like, in the car, like I never like, felt oh, this warm before. No, likely. Absolutely. That would have happened. So there would have been four gone by the time I got home. So the got got there home. had been two gone yeah. before they checked out. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you're the kid, Krispy Kreme. Phil king. wasn't even feeling for the warmth. She was just wondering why her dad was eating it <laughs> yeah. before he bought the box. I'm tempted yes. to go over there after this pod if we get done in a decent hour. You know, everything you eat after 11 o'clock turns to fat. So it's 10 o'clock right now. So I still got time. Phil, what else? He's marbling got? right now. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand you. And uh, guys, give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter <laughs> at TFF Dudes and check this thing out on YouTube, guys, at TFF Dudes. Uh, yeah, keep going. All right, moving on here from our Krispy Kreme talk. A, uh, uh, let's go to uh, Seth Sit, the Chicago Bears, and we will close it out with. Uh, oh, dude, you know what, Jordan? I was going to give you Chris Godwin. You haven't talked about that, right? I yeah, yeah I real quick. Like, go, ahead, go ahead and go there. Uh, Godwin was good. It's crazy that Godwin actually, like, they scored 30, what, 37 points or whatever, and Godwin had two catches for 15 yards. So definitely got that one right. Yeah, so feel a little bit lucky, honestly, but I'll take it. 
Well, I wasn't even looking at that. Like Jordan, I forgot about Godwin being your sit of the week. And you know, it like I right before the pod when I was entering in the numbers, I was like, oh man, Jordan probably missed this Godwin one because that game was just yeah, you know, crazy. Well, I, I kind of thought the same thing too. I was like, I don't remember. I don't think he scored, but I was like, he scored thirty-seven points. He might have got like six, seventy yards on like seven catches or something. But yeah, nothing. I mean. So, but Rashad White did a lot of work on the ground in that game. Rashad White so. did really good. Yeah. And um, Kate Otten. Our number one job. receiver there. What was that? Otten? He's basically the number one receiver there. Well, outside of Mike Evans, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's just getting so many targets and, and catches yeah. now. He's just like a PPR guy. Rashad White, you're talking about? Yeah, we're Shad White. Yeah, yeah. You know his his workload and his role is like one of the best in football. Like mm-hmm. it's yeah. it's a really good role. Yeah, so. he was RB one so far on the week, followed by Josh Jacobs. And hey, Jordan Ramondre had a good game. You did talk about Ramondre in your video with Matt Jones, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Ramondre yeah. had a fifty yard touchdown run. Nice. All right, Seth. Let's uh, Seth or Tim. You want to talk about your uh, your running back, Chicago running backs? Yeah, so uh, Roshan uh, only had two carries for six yards and a catch for nine yards. Um, and then uh, Teforman had 20 carries for 83 yards. So I guess I said both running backs. So they both combined for 10. Uh, one, one running back got 8.3. The other one got two. So I'll, I'll take the win on this one. Both of them combined for 10. If you started both of them, you weren't happy because that average is about five points per player. If you started Donta, maybe you're happy that he got 8.3 because maybe that's the best guy you got. I mean, he had 20 touches, didn't have a touchdown. I think if I hit a touchdown, I'll take the L, but the Bears didn't have any rushing touchdowns. I think that kind of helped it because Badgett did throw three picks. So I think um, – I mean, it's easy to target these these Bears players and team, though, because they're not good. Um, but sure, I'll take the win there. Yeah, Foreman almost had a touchdown run. He barely got caught. Like, he looked really good on one run. I think he got – I think he did about a quarter of his damage on that run. But, uh, mm. yeah. What else you got, Phil? No, that's – in terms of starts, sits, I believe, start – or we have Singletary. You want to talk about that? Yeah, Singletary, he got, like, all the workload for the Texans, but it was just a throwing game. Like, they just – you know, this offensive coordinator, too, I saw a guy saying, like, he's – they're really – they put Stroud in a really good spot. He's a rookie quarterback, and uh, they're I, – I don't know. Stroud's really good. Like, they did not need Singletary today. And uh, they were winning a good amount of the game also. Like, what was his – he had three fantasy points. Like, I, I was hoping. You he know, had I don't know if he was that damage. efficient, though. I will say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, clearly he wasn't. But uh, um, what, what's his what's his points? But yeah, not not a good sleeper play. Was hoping that'd be a little bit better. He went nine nine attempts for fourteen yards. He had two catches for two yards. So not a great Devin Singletary play for a guy who played. I'm seeing thirteen for twenty six Singletary. So you see, but I yeah. said I said nine. Yeah, it is. 13, yeah, so 26. the efficiency wasn't there. I mean, he had fifteen touches, but yeah, just so, wasn't there. All right, we want to hop on over to who hurt you, Phil. Yeah, we can hop on over to who hurt you. I think Jordan probably. Well, he Jordan has Jordan has someone who definitely hurt him, but then he had another guy who he was he we were shocked that he was speaking highly of who actually did pretty well. But let's talk about I think we all en- just enjoy hearing a little bit more about the the pain that's brought on to, to some of our lives. So Jordan, who hurt you today? I mean, number one was Mac Jones. The guy like had him in my main, my main single entry uh tournament team on DraftKings, just guy sucks i i i will never ever play mac jones again i don't care what matchup he's in i don't care what i will never recommend mac jones again the only words you'll ever hear me say again with mac jones is mac jones sucks i'm gonna i'm gonna quote what jordan said on when on uh on uh wednesday or on thursday morning jordan goes i can't believe i'm saying this but i actually like mac jones this week (laughs) and then now he's now he's on his most hated list it's awesome. I, I well, he already was, and I just, you know, like he played I him anyways. Only, oh, 
<laughs> only you trust the matchups when it's like somewhat Errors. of a good player. Like I just, I know it's terrible. The guy's just not. I, I, I oh, genuinely so feel bad. for you. But oh. here's the thing, Jordan. No, you're I a caring it. person. You shouldn't even feel bad for me. I deserve Okay, never mind. It. This is the pain I <laughs> If your I, left I hand causes you to sin, cut it off, Jordan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to, uh, yeah. <laughs> cut off Mac Jones. Uh, the thing yeah. saying, uh, Jordan, Jordan, like four weeks ago, is like, don't talk about Mac Jones ever again on this pod. And then he's like, I like Mac Jones this week, guys. <laughs> and now he's mad yeah. he lost some money. Hey, oh, yeah. You know, at least, oh man, yeah. Mac Jones is hurtful. You, uh, who else? Like uh, Jonathan Taylor, you know, I thought he was so going to have a big game. And he had like 40 yards like in the first half and then didn't have any really more rushing yards after that. A decent um, receiving game though, right? Yeah, he had a nice touchdown. So, But uh, Zay Flowers only had one catch. That was bizarre. Yeah, that was um, weird. Well, the Seahawks yeah, just couldn't stop anything. So, whatever. Um, but Mo, honestly, like Mac Jones, like the whole Patriots offense, like Mac Jones was very like hurtful because I had a lot of CD lamb, um, who, who smashed like Dak Prescott smashed, you know? So Dak had um, a great game. yeah, but see, I just, I had too much Mac Jones this week and everything. So I don't know. It's frustrating. Most hurtful player of the week, I think. And I think I speak for a lot of guys with this. Thursday night football can absolutely just break your back in fantasy football. And when you start a guy like George Pickens, who goes out there and has two catches for negative one yards, it's just like, this is horrible. I'm not going to win. I played George Pickens in a game versus Seth, a game that I really needed to win. And Pickens goes out there and gets you negative points. He did have a touchdown catch. He almost caught, but I think George Pickens is one of those guys that maybe, you know, it's set a little bit because it was a Thursday game. It's now Sunday night, but yeah, George Pickens, absolutely just backbreaker Thursday night. Like if you won with George Pickens on your team, you probably had a really like, maybe you had CJ Stroud. I don't know. No, Trent, I th like if you would have asked me on Friday, Pickens would have been top of the list. Like he cost me big time on Thursday night, too. And and the crazy thing is that that touchdown, there was no excuse for him not scoring. Like, oh, yeah, it was just lack of focus and lack of like concentration on his point to not score that touchdown. And then uh, Bijan Robinson, like Algier came yep. in and got the touchdown run like. Bijan's brutal. That was my first round pick in that league. And part of the reason why I'm not doing so good. And then another guy who hurt me, which I don't know if it really hurts, but I traded Devonta Smith for, let me see my trade here before, you know, you guys freak out in this league. I, I freed Devonta Smith. So if Devonta Smith did good for you this week. It's because I traded him for <laughs> T Higgins <laughs> and T Higgins did good for T. Higgins. I'm happy. Higgins was also good, but it was a two for one. I traded Devonta Smith for T Higgins and Cam Akers and, you know, RIP oh. Cam Akers Achilles. So the trade did not work out quite That's as good. That's his second time tearing his Achilles, right? Yeah. Second time. Is this same Achilles or different Achilles? I do not know, but so I, you know, if you have Devonta Smith, you know, tweet at me or whatever, you know, thanking me because I got him off my team and he finally had, you know, a good game. But I, I'm thinking T. Higgins. I, I think the trade's going to come out pretty fair, Jordan. Yeah. But uh, is this is this the year for more torn Achilles than there's ever have been? In the, I in feel the like it is. Man. Dude, there's been a ton this year. It is insane how many t torn Achilles or messed up Achilles, even even strained Achilles. There, there has been so many Achilles injuries. I feel like, oh, man, I'm I'm curious, like if. Uh, I'm, I don't want to make this like a turf conversation, but I feel like I only hear about Achilles injuries on turf. Like we see ACL injuries on grass and turf, obviously more on turf than grass, but I'm curious how many Achilles injuries occur on turf and compared to grass, which is interesting. And it seems like guys, I mean, this obviously makes sense. Guys with Achilles history have Achilles injuries again, like JK Dobbins, um, who else? Who else am I trying to think of? Cam Akers, right? And I think there's one other player who's torn it twice, and the, the second time was this year. But was it ET in last year? Or no, two years he ago? had he had Liz Frank. ET hasn't, yeah, he has oh, Liz Frank. Liz Frank. Yeah, and no, I didn't even know what that was till he had it. So I can't believe yeah. I remembered that. You've been living with it for 30 years. 
probably. No, that's gout. That- <laughs> I, do not, I do not have gout, but I do know people with gout. My dad has gout. It's not a joking matter, Seth. So I would, it's kind of rude if you know that. So it's like, you know, if you want to get personal, I can start making fun of your haircut. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, they said, and, and not only that, like, I think it's just, like you said, Seth, that's a good point. Like, Pete, they're playing way more on these turf fields at least in my opinion, like they're a little bit more common. So it's probably not a shock that it's, it may not even be the, like the instant tear. It's just like the repetitive, like how, how they're playing on those fields. Like they're not forgiving at all. No, maybe turf fields are who hurt us this, this last season, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought Kyle Pitts had a good spot with Drake London being out, and then Jonu Smith goes out there and catches a 60 yard touchdown pass. And it was like behind the line of scrimmage, you know, it was like a, so Jonu still has some gas in the tank. Uh, Seth, who hurts you this week? Um, I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go Jamar Chase here. I needed Jamar Chase to go off for me. Um, I didn't really feel like I got too hurt, like in any sports bets. I think I I tailed Jordan on some picks, and I don't know if I think some of those some of those were pretty close to hitting. Some uh, didn't hit. Um, I had a few picks that hit, but they were not any big money ones. So I'm not, I didn't have like a terrible week, but I'll go with Jamar Chase. Um, man, T Higgins just got used and I need a chase to get some points for me to kind of secure a win in one. I need him to score 20 points in another to get a win and it didn't happen. So I'm kind of bummed about that, but I didn't really have anything that hurt me too much. Maybe something that hurt me this weekend is all these different uh, people trying to plan weddings, you know, when I'm trying to watch football, I don't know. Like maybe that that's, maybe that's what hurt me a little bit. You know, that makes sense. That might be your diva. We may, we may need to save that one, Seth. That might be your yeah, diva of the week. Save that. Phil, anything hurt you? You know, you walk into the door that you thought was open or something like what? what no, just the fact that I didn't get Krispy Kreme. That's uh that's what hurt me today. Outside of that, no, I, I, um, I, nothing, nothing too bad. I, I all these buys actually hurt me. I will say that. If anything, yeah. there's so I feel like how, how many teams were on buy this week? It was a decent amount of teams on four? buy. I, no. I, I have it in, I three have it in the show notes. If it you, can't be if three. You scroll up. Uh, there was four this past week. It was yeah. four. Okay, so I, that really killed me this week. Um, which again, that, that happens every month, but this bye week excuse me, happens every year, this bye week Absolutely. And I, I honestly, I, in, in a lot of the leagues, they are super low scoring games. A lot of the, 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 uh, higher scoring, uh, fantasy players are, are on bench this week. CMC just being one of them, but, um, there's a decent amount of guys mm-hmm. on, on, uh, on by this week. Um, yeah, outside of that, I think we can either, unless you have another ad read, we could probably get into divas. I also want it. This is not really a diva, but, um, it actually is related to underdogs. Why don't you do this ad read real quick? And then we'll, uh, we'll, I, uh, I, I think I did an underdog ad read. Already. It just it switched. Under- presented. He did That's it right. You did do the underdog. So here's what I'm going to say. How long do you think it'll be the L- NFL? It, they bother me so much just for what it's worth. Like the overall, like they don't want people doing the push tush push anymore or the brotherly shove because it's not equal for everybody. And they just don't like that. You know, not everyone can be on the same playing field. They make, I don't know. I feel like Mahomes gets all these calls. I think they're always looking to try and like level the playing field for everyone who's playing in the NFL, which to me is just wild. Like if you have a good team, you should just be the best team. You should spank everyone. I don't really care. I'm all about the best team winning. How much longer do you think we're going to go? They're also always about like trying to make the games interesting and things like that. How much longer do you think we're going to go where it's not going to even matter who wins the coin toss at the beginning of the game? If you're up by like 10 to 14 points coming out of half, they're going to give you or force you to kick the ball off to the team who is down by 14 to try and make the games more interesting. Like how long do you think we have until the NFL is going to start enacting on that? Think about all the other stuff they've enacted to try and make them closer or better games. I guarantee we are less than five years away from making that happen so that there's more opportunity for teams to win or for games to be closer. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I would not be surprised if they're already talking about that. You're talking about like a mercy rule or something? Like not a mercy rule, not a, not a mercy rule, not a mercy rule. I'm thinking that like, if you're up by 14 or more, the team who is down automatically gets the, the return coming back outside of half. 
Like I would hey, not Phil. be surprised. Oh, I, I see what you're saying right there. I, I, man, I, if this happens, it's believable, like, right? You're, you're a, pro, you're a prophet. If this happens, like I, I, I don't, what Jordan, maybe you should go work for a Vince McMahon in the XFL. You, your idea would fit in pretty good there. It would fit in pretty good, but I would not be surprised. And I don't. I wouldn't even like that. It would actually make me mad if they did this. But I would not be surprised that the NFL It'll never happen. Going... It'll never happen. Hot chip challenge again. I know no, nothing against me. <laughs> Gosh, I would not. Five be years. You have five years for this to happen. So yeah. both you're gonna be sweating this in the next five years. But you gotta put more I'll skin in the be... game. You gotta like, how about the loser guys like chop off their pinky or something cool? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't want any of your. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about there. I can easily see that happening. <laughs> Seth. I what? can easily see that happening. You have a deranged mind, Seth. I'm just gonna <laughs> yes, leave it there. I know. That's the I nicest know. way I can say that. I'd hate to be alone with your thoughts, man. That is just a. <laughs> I, uh, between the two of you, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be alone with either of your thoughts. Like, this was a – it's not a – no, it won't happen, but it's actually something I could see happening in, like – Couldn't you sport. see that happening? I could see like, happening given, in youth sports, not not the NFL. I could easily see it happening in the NFL given all – they want to they ban the tush push because other teams aren't able to do it, and there's a potential for – they're, they're not banning it because there's a potential for energy, energy, injury – Oh, everyone's wearing helmets. Like everyone's wearing pads. Like it's, this is not an injury thing. It is a, they're trying to level the playing field thing. And that honestly ticks me right off. Like, where is it going to end? You know what I'm saying? Like we don't need to level the playing field. Just let the best teams win. That's all I'm saying here. You're right on the tush push thing because it's just because the Eagles are so good at it. Where do we draw the line as viewers? I'm about to end a cancel red zone right now. Just to, just to really hurt them where it hurts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you're, you're, Jordan, what are you thinking right now? Like, I don't, I don't know if this is a diva of the week or what this is. This is just like, no. I was just thinking rabbit. about it. I think it's just like I was one of thinking, Phil's rants. I was thinking about it over the weekend, and I'm like, it is. We're less than five years away from something like this happening. Where I, I guarantee it. I profits not known in his own hometown. Guaranteed, it is going to happen. If you aren't watching on YouTube, Phil actually has a tinfoil hat on right now, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into Divas He's brushing of the week. his teeth with the brush out, though. It's weird. <laughs> Let's get to Divas. Again, what is going on in the thoughts in your headset? It's like the cross-section of weird. No, and... You two should not be able to bash each other. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, Divas All right, Donut of... Boy. <laughs> me? <laughs> what is that? Me or Trent? That's not Trent, right? Both of you. <laughs> uh everyone on this pod probably used less donuts but anyways guys diva of the week jordan slimmed down a little bit i feel like let's go to divas what? of the week my diva of the week though it is the nfl they're finding all these players so uh patrick ricard got fined this pat not this week the week before twenty one thousand dollars for unnecessary no. roughness did you guys see this play what no I did not see that. So I, I'm going to pull it up here right now and share the screen. I'm going to mute the screen so that we don't have a bunch of audio like we did last week. But uh, here we go. It's right here, loading it up. Here he is. There he is, the fullback. That was it right there. Watch the fullback here. Unnecessary roughness on the fullback. $21,000 fine. What did he do? Led with his face mask? Just, just blocked. What did he do? He did his job. That's what he did. So yeah, this is, is turning crazy. Into, Can you appeal that? You should be able to. What is he supposed to do? He's the lead blocker. He's the fullback. Wait, wait, and what? He gets fined forty-one, or he gets fined twenty-one thousand dollars for that. So the NFL went out and they find a couple running backs. Who is the other? Was it Gus Edwards? Warren. One other, one other running Warren. back got fined his whole paycheck. I can't. It was remember which Warren. One it was Warren. It was Warren. Steelers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. see, it's Trent. You're you're saying that. So you guys are saying that. You know, in my world where the NFL does things that are illogical, it's not going to happen. But in the world that we're living now, they're finding people for things that are completely illogical. Like that's what I'm saying. Like they've lost their minds. That it warns was not even bad. He, I think he hit him with his hands first. Ricards isn't bad either. He's a I lead know. blocker, fullback. It's, I it's could, pretty pathetic. You, if you could stretch it, sure, maybe he led with his face mask first, but I'm pretty sure Warren hit you with his hands first. Stretch it. What do you want the guy to do? Flop like a fish in front of the guy? Like, no. It's not even it's it makes not no over. sense. 
It's not yeah, that was something that they went back after the game a week later and said, Hey, here's your unnecessary roughness fine. It wasn't a they penalty. Have, they're they're just going back and this. finding all this stuff. Who is the is guy with the pencil deal? protector or pocket protector going back watching these games and finding players? Like the guy's just sitting in a room. I actually wouldn't mind being that guy watching NFL yeah. games over and over again, looking for people to find. Like that I'm sure like they found the best worker job. at the DMV and gave him a job at the NFL to go be ticky tacky <laughs> and annoy everybody in the league. Yeah, it's an absolute joke. It's like, yeah, it's like, hey, uh, oh, you're at the DMV. Oh, your lines, you know, serving one customer every 45 minutes. Hey, we got a job for you, buddy. Come over here but yeah so that's who it is but yeah you're right phil i don't even know what you said what kind of protector does anyone else have a diva pencil the week, or a pocket protector i i actually have a diva this week trent okay i'm a little worried about this yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah I know. so it's from when i was at the world series game and uh so i we're sitting there and like people were staying up sitting down kind of like staying up in big moments you know if they got a guy on base you know whatever so it's probably fifth inning. All of a sudden, I hear a guy yell. There's a group of people probably 10 rows down from me. There's like probably like 10 people staying up and like three rows consecutively in the same three seats, you know? And all of a sudden, I hear like sit someone yelling like, sit down. And I was like, man, is some Rangers fan? Like they were up 3-1 at the time or 3-0. Like is some Rangers fan just trying to like tell a Diamondback fan to stop staying up, you know, just because they're losing. And I look over, and, and it's, a, it's a Diamondback fan, and he gets out of his seat and sprints down there. Like, literally stands up, sprints down to the group of people, and chews them all out and tells them all to sit down. And, like, it's, I, it's like, super animated, like, basically saying, like, I can't see because you're, you're – and, like, there's, like, a crucial, like, at-bat going on while this is happening. Like we're in the World Series, game three, first like first home game in 20, 22 years. And so did you like, sit down? It wasn't me. It was like oh, the people okay. in front of me. But like those the guy sprints, like he literally sprints down and just starts chewing them out about staying up. And I'm just like, look, I get it. Like you can't, but also it's like this is the World Series. And like if people want to stand up, they should be able to stand up. And like you like throwing a hissy fit about it. I don't know. Like in the he, nosebleeds. In the nosebleeds, exactly. Like you sprinted, he's literally sprinted down, and like had this like tough guy act about him, like thinking he was like all tough because he went down there, sprinted down there and told the people to sit down. Like so you ended up laying up? down. But it's so so the guy sit down after you ran down there. Yeah, because like I think the guy was literally gonna cause a scene if, if they didn't sit down. Like yeah, uh, that, I don't were know. they just like, is, where like, is this coming from? Like, were they just like, yeah, it was just problem? like all random too. Like, it's just my thing is this: if it's the World Series, like you should be able to stand up if you want to stand up, and if you can't see, then stand up too. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the diva for thinking like that, but it's like this is not some random game in July. You know, if it was some random game in July, I'd, I kind of agree with them, but it's the World Series. Like, and the Diamondbacks are up to like they're they're. Like they're up to bat. Like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I agree with the, I probably wouldn't. The only time is I would maybe say something is if someone's wearing like a huge, like foam hat or something and you can't yeah. see even sitting down. There, yes. That's different. Yeah. But, but it was just the way he sprinted. You'd have to like, in my mind, I think it's more diva diva ish. Like if you could see how he acted and like him just yelling and then like just sprinting down the stairs, you know, to go Were confront they booing these him? people. No. Seth, I don't know how many people actually saw it. I, I just happened to see it because I heard the guy yelling. And I'm just like, why is this guy yelling? And then he just sprints down there and starts chewing these people out. Yeah. No, that's, yeah, definitely Diva of the Week. Seth, you have anything? I don't know. Maybe the Velcro went out on your shoes. What do you got? Uh, No. Uh, I'll, I'll say this one. I actually have a good one. Um, So... I was in a wedding on Saturday. You guys, you guys know, um, my buddy had us get rental suits and I'm just going to say the diva of these things are just the rental shoes. These things are abysmal. Okay. My feet are killing me all night, all night. My feet are killing me. My feet have hurt all day today. Zach, I love you, but the rental shoes you got sucked. Okay. <laughs> and my feet hurt so bad. These things are terrible. 
that I'd rather wear wooden shoes than these things. <laughs> so I hate these, rental. That's my shoes. Diva the week. Terrible. Whoever made these shoes, never make them again. Now, if you need shoes to protect your feet, they're fine. But these things make your feet hurt more than they protect them. So diva these rental shoes terrible i don't know are you like worried that it's, you're gonna have to like fend off an intruder at a wedding like what are you worried about protecting your feet at, with the the i'm saying they would su they would suffice for people who need shoes but i don't need yes. shoes and but like these things are terrible phil they're awful <laughs> no i know what you're getting to and they're like, like i'm the double blistery like and shiny my heels and my oh. like the, the arches of my feet and my toes are killing me. Okay. I know we want are absolutely killing I know you. we want views on YouTube, but don't hold your foot up to the camera. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our other that's our other channel. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Phil, do you got anything, you know, like uh the fact that you couldn't buy donuts for your family? Like what what do you got? No, the, uh, my diva of the week was just me going down a, like a rabbit trail of just being mad at the NFL for something they've yet to do, but I could see them doing. <laughs> Phil got super mad at the NFL for an idea he has that's not even official yet. Like it's only in his own mind. Like no one's. But they're gonna it. do guaranteed yeah, though. Yeah. They'll probably hear this pod, and I wouldn't be surprised if it goes on the docket. Let's just do this. If it goes on the docket for 2025. You or excuse me, yeah, twenty the 2024, 2025 season. You guys all have to deb or you guys all have to credit my sleeper account twenty five dollars a piece. Can we can we all agree to that? Sure, sure, sure. All right, that's fine. All right, guys. Well, that does it. I think for today's episode. Thanks for tuning. In, as always, we got the waiver show coming tomorrow, and uh, we will be previewing all the week. Is it week ten now? Is that where we're at? That's right. Yeah. It comes after nine. Preview. Well, I, was, I, kind of, I kind of forgot what week it was. That's the problem. But uh, we are halfway there, kind of like you're you know, living on a prayer. Anyways, we will see you next time, guys. And as always, take care. This has been another episode of the Fantasy Football Dudes podcast. Remember to rate, review, and follow. For more information, go to www.thefantasyfootballdudes.com. And remember, we are sorry for absolutely nothing.